mouth's a little, my mouth's all, all askew, but I'll fix it in the moments. Uh, welcome to Blooming Onion, uh, <laughs> 60 minute yoga practice. Uh, let me run through a couple of uh, technical things before um, we launch into practice. Um, one is if you uh, would like to make a donation to uh, this stream, um, you can do that at my website by uh, going to the Brownstone Yoga website. There is a button to donate. Um, I was made aware this week that there's kind of a scam going with the, um, the service that we're using to take donations. And um, you can make a donation and they will charge you extra if you try to use one of the gifts. So even if it says you are donating enough to use a gift, you are still going to be charged for the gift and then will be charged for the service of Streamlabs. So don't use the gifts if you're planning to donate. Uh, if you have done so in the past and used a gift, then you gift and you'll have to go back to a stream your Streamlabs account and delete that so you're not charged again and again. So sorry about that if that has happened to you. <laughs> um, okay, so donations um, for September. I have not decided um, where in whole they'll be going. In part, they'll be going to. Um, Revolution Therapy and Yoga, formerly Rubber Solo Yoga Studio. Um, we raised about $78 for them last month, and also last month uh, we made a donation to Fair Fight, so uh, of $98. So um, I'm not sure, I haven't picked a, um, a nonprofit to um, contribute to this month, but um, I will, and I'll let you know when I do. Um, yeah, so uh, those things and also um, with my daughter starting kindergarten online next week, I'm, um, I'm going to have to change my schedule. So this class is the one class that I think will be fine. Um, I just won't be able to teach in the mornings on the weekdays anymore. So that will be conducive maybe to uh, some people's schedules. I'm considering a Sunday afternoon class, maybe at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I'm not sure about uh, another evening class in the week. If I do it, I think it would be on Monday. So um, let me know if you have a preference, if you've been tuning into the live stream classes and would like to continue to do that on other days of the week. Again, this class will remain the same. Okay, so also, um, <laughs> the name of the class this week is Bloom and Onion. I had the opportunity to work, uh, to take a class last weekend with this wonderful teacher, Rhonda Helm. And uh, she made this reference to the lotus heart. And I love that imagery of the unfurling, un unfolding lotus flower. But um, as I've continued to think about it, I, I realized that not only is the heart unfolding, but it is, <laughs> it's enfolding as well. So um, there is, um, it really goes well with the concepts that I am trying to weave into the practice, these concepts of revealing and hi hiding and revealing happening all the time. These um, contrasting actions, these paradox of the practice. Um, so blooming onion is just kind of a, it's supposed to be funny. Uh, <laughs> it's like this uh, open, this flower opening, this suspended uh, fried in grease. Okay, so <laughs> let's get started. I've rambled on too much already. Uh, let me ramble on over here. So welcome. Um, if you'd like to tell me who's joining me for practice live, I'd love to love to hear from you. Um, if you have props, gather them. We're going to use all the props you got if you have them. So um, first, I'd like you to get out a blanket and unfold it like so. Uh, if you don't have a blanket, alternatively, you could roll up your, your sticky mat. Okay, so I'm going to take my blanket and from the folded edge, I'm going to roll it towards the fringe edge. And then if you have a second blanket, you might put it at the top of your mat. You might even put a block up there. 
We're gonna come to lying on our backs to start the practice today. So uh, I'm gonna lie back and situate this blanket roll at the base of my shoulder blades. Lengthen out through my legs and start to lean my head and shoulders back so that this, uh, this blanket or your mat is pushing the heart space open and up. So as you put your head back, if this feels uncomfortable for the neck or if the head is just hovering um, unsupported above the floor, then take a second pad in the form of a blanket, a block, or even a pillow and place it underneath your head to support the neck. Arms expand out to either side of the room. You might tuck the shoulder blades gently underneath the chest and close your eyes. in life, you are the observer as well as the observed. what you are feeling physically in this moment. Become conscious of any areas of the body that might be calling for attention. And this call might appear in the form of pain, discomfort, could arrive in the form of pleasure. Notice sensation. Become aware of the spaces where your back body is touching the surfaces beneath you. Consider the weight of your body acting on those surfaces. Consider those surfaces holding your body, acting as support as you release back. where your skin is exposed to the air around you. Can you feel any difference in temperature between the air of the room and your skin? Where do you feel the air most acutely? that feels particularly sensitive. Throughout the practice, I will bring you uh, to this observation of your own face. Consider if uh, there is an expression on your face. Consider whether you were aware of making that expression, or whether it was an unconscious uh, 
um, unconscious action. The activity of the face, as well as other parts of the body, act as a reflection to the experience that you are having. back out into the world around you. You might trace the path of each breath, feel air entering in through the nostrils, moving into and filling the lungs. You can feel the lungs the feet on the floor. If you have padding behind the head, remove it. And then remove the padding from behind the chest and lie back down. Extend your arms out to either side of the room, opening the arms up like a T. Pick the feet as wide as the mat and with your next exhale, let the knees fall to the left. Release the weight of the legs completely as you exhale. Inhale, draw the knees back through center and exhale, let the knees fall to the right. Completely release the weight of the legs at the bottom of the exhalation. Inhale, center. Exhale, knees to the left. Inhale, center, and once again, knees to the right. Inhale through center, and now release the right knee off to the right, as though you're setting up the right leg for a simple cross-legged seated position. Then cross the left ankle to the outside of the right thigh, targeting the right outer hip, much the same way we would in a figure four shape, if you're familiar with that pose. But this is as though the figure four has fallen onto uh, the right side. So if this is accessible to you and interesting, stay here. If this is inaccessible, then uh, come into figure four as an alternative. To deepen this shape, lean over to the right and grab the uh, left ankle with the right hand. Place the left foot on the floor. Let the experience of this shape bring you into your body and into this moment. Recognize the ability of the breath 
to move awareness and energy through the left hip in this shape. And if that concept of moving energy with breath is a, uh, a new idea for you, it's something that we cultivate through the yoga practice. And by creating that idea or introducing that idea into the body again and again, it begins to become real, is my experience. Negotiate the right ankle to the outside of the left thigh, right foot coming down to the floor. And you might notice a significant difference in sensation from the first side to the second side. You might notice a significant difference in accessibility on one side and the other. Observe your experience in this pose, in this moment, and realize that throughout the practice we are making decisions. Even though I'm giving you a lot of instruction and likely you're listening to the instruction and attempting to do a lot of the things that I say, but even within that instruction there are choices being made. So notice the choices that you are making in your practice and how they manifest in your experience. And then what do you do when uh, with the data that you observe in your practice. What, what kind of changes do you make? So you might grab the right ankle. So that would be, a, that would be an instance where you've made a choice. Have you decided to grab the ankle? Or have you decided to leave the pose as it, as it was? When you have found the, the shape that you are uh, interested in taking, Again, uh, arrive with your breath and consider this idea of using the breath to send movement through the right hip, movement of prana, vital energy throughout the body. the ankle, uncross the legs, re-square the hips and draw the knees in towards the chest. We're going to do when we're moving pose. So in this pose we try to lengthen the spine along the floor, wrap the arms around the fronts of the legs, grabbing wrists, elbows or uh, forearms, whatever you can reach, and then draw the thighs strongly in towards the abdomen, tilt the chin towards the chest, lengthen the back of the neck, squeeze the legs in, Feel the lower back lengthen along the floor. And then we're going to grab the shins with the hands, curl the chin towards the chest, and then get some momentum to rock along the spine. So let this movement build gradually. And then as you come forward next, plant your feet and come into a forward fold. Placing your feet hip width distance apart, lift and spread your toes before placing them back down. Rest your torso on your thighs, let the upper body hang forward, take hold of opposite wrists, forearms or biceps, and then begin to rock side to side, releasing the weight of the upper body downward. Encouraging release in the spine between each vertebra. 
maybe rocking the feet side to side, rocking weight from the front of the feet to the back of the feet, perhaps shaking the head, yes and no, identifying tension. And by observing and identifying tension, how do you start to uh, conceptualize letting that go? Fingertips come to the floor or blocks in front of you. Push your feet down as you lift your hips high into the air, lengthening along the backs of the legs, lifting into the front of the legs. Draw your kneecaps in and up. Extend the crown of your head towards the floor, adding to the length that you've just created through release and now expanding actively into that length. Shoulders up away from the ears as the elbows bend out towards either side of the room. And as you inhale next, bring your fingers lightly to your shins and lift up halfway using the strength of your core to bring your body, your upper body parallel to the floor. Draw your shoulder blades together behind your heart, toning the muscles of your upper back. Push the feet down, lift the kneecaps and the hips up. Draw your lower front ribs in and back so the lower spine remains long. Gaze down and forward, back of the neck, long crown of the head reaches to the room in front of you. And then with an exhale, fold back in, fingertips to the floor or to blocks. Inhale, rise up to standing, reach up as you look up, palms touch overhead. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides, mountain pose, Tadasana. Breathe here, feel the connection to your body and the earth through the conduit of your feet, feet pushing energy downward, earth rising up to meet your body, to hold your body, growing tall from the feet through the crown of the head. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, look up, palms touch. Exhale, you might gently bend your knees as you flow forward, fingertips to the block or floor. Inhale, fingertips lightly to the shins, shoulder blades on the back, half lift, exhale and flow forward. Inhale to rise, reach up, look up, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides. Okay, we're gonna move through our C salutation. If you've done this with me before, uh, you can just start right into it. If you have not done a C salutation, S-E-A, um, then you might watch this first one and then we'll do the next few together. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway, fingertips lightly on the shins. And now exhale, sink your hips back, fingertips to the floor as though you're sitting your butt into a chair. Look forward, reach your arms forward, waistline back, half awkward chair. And then exhale, lower the hips to the floor, swing your legs overhead. Inhale, momentum forward, come up onto the feet, half awkward chair, waistline back, gaze and heart forward. Exhale, push the feet down, lift the hips up, fold in. Inhale, as you rise, stand up, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center, back to Tadasana. Inhale, sweep the arms up, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, sink into the hips. Inhale, arms forward, waistline back. Exhale, sink the hips, swing the legs overhead. Inhale, momentum coming forward, come up to balance. Half chair. Exhale, fold forward, head low, hips high. Inhale to rise, look up, reach up, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center, arms to your sides. Again, inhale, reach up. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, sink the hips into the chair. Inhale, arms forward, waistline back. Exhale, sink the hips, swing the legs overhead. Inhale, momentum coming forward, balance. Exhale, hips high, head low. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands through heart center, arms to your sides. Last one. Inhale, rise. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, sink the hips. Inhale, arms and chest forward. Exhale, lower the hips to the earth, swing the legs overhead. Inhale, come forward. 
forward, balance. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands through heart center, back to Tadasana. Become your mountain. Return to the breath. Palms open forward, feet press down, crown of the head grows tall. You might imagine a vast desert landscape in front of you, one where you can see for miles into the distance and look towards the horizon, that space where land and sky meet. Occupy that space with your pose. We are going to do a um, crescent, two crescent poses, one each direction, and then we're going to do a couple of back bends. So the crescent poses can be done either with um, the feet together, base of the big toes touching, or you can slide a block at its lowest setting between your thighs. Either way, tone the muscles of your legs, lift the kneecaps in and up, lengthen the tailbone down, lifting through the front of the hip points. So instead of tailbone back, tailbone down, lift from here, push down, sweep your arms overhead, interlace your fingers, cross your thumbs, point your index fingers to the sky, grow tall, inhale, and exhale, upper body leans left, hips shift to the right. Check out where you are. <laughs> you might have already made some decisions coming into this pose. What, have, what decisions have you made? If you're feeling pain or compression in the low back, perhaps bring the left hand down to the hip, supporting more uh, lift in the heart. Otherwise, you can use the left hand to draw the right side body long. Choose to turn your gaze up beyond the right tricep muscles. Notice the expression in the face. What's it telling you about your experience of this moment? Is it possible to soften into that moment, or to soften into the face, arrive in the moment, breathe along the right side body, creating strength, stability, and expansion? Inhale back through center, switch the interlace of your fingers, opposite thumb in front, grow tall, push down, rise up. Exhale, upper body leans to the right, hips shift to the left. Hips and chest squared forward, so likely that means right shoulder slightly forward, left outer hip slightly forward. Choose to keep the hands here or bring the right hand to the hip for support of the low back. Or use the right hand to grow the right side body longer. Choose to look forward or up. Notice the face, soften the face, breathe along the left side body. Inhale back through center, release the arms down, and uh, we're going to come into a uh, first of two back bends. So our first back bend, we're going to interlace the fingers behind the back, push the knuckles into the sacral spine. So one thing I like to do here is encourage the tailbone to lengthen down as the knuckles press in and pull downward. As the tailbone lengthens down, the kneecaps draw in and lift up. The front of the hip points grow taller. Point your elbows towards the back wall to shrug your shoulders together behind your heart. And then look up, tilting your chin and gaze skyward. Start to breathe into the space of your heart. You might, uh, again, picture that, <laughs> that blooming onion, that, um, that expanding, unfurling lotus. Extend the knuckles down towards the floor, keeping the hands interlaced, reaching downward. Now try to pull your hands apart and notice how that reactivates the upper back. Choose to stay here or begin to look along the ceiling as you curl the upper body back. You know I'm going to do it. Into the unknown. Look back, curl back. Spill your brains onto the floor behind you.
okay, chest forward, release the hands, shoulders forward, head comes up last, and then circles with the shoulders, maybe a few times forward, maybe a few times back. Okay, we're going to do that a second time. So I almost always just let my head go back like that <laughs> in a back bend. That, that's just what I, that's what I like to do. It's not every, um, not every system of yoga will uh, advise that or teach it that way. Um, I, you know, I imagine at some point in my practice, I'm going to stop doing that. But um, again, that's a place where we do have, we do make decisions in our own practice. So I think it's, it's good to notice what, what, where and where and what decisions you're making. So um, I make that decision because it doesn't hurt my head, and I like the feel. I like seeing what's back there. It makes me, gives me motivation to go further back. So notice your own tendencies. Make your own choices. It's your practice. You're the observer and the observed. Arms at a T, like a goalpost, football goalpost. Elbows in towards the armpits. Push down through the feet, engage the legs. Turn the gaze up, tilt the chin up. Breathe into your lotus heart. And then begin to look back, curl back. Look back, curl back. Choose to keep the head suspended or release the head back. When you're ready, ribs, chest, arms, head come forward. And then do some shoulder rolling forward and back. And uh, remove the block if you have it. Sweep the arms overhead with your next inhale. And then bend the knees as you fold forward. Fingertips to the block or two blocks or the floor in front of you. Release your head down and start to walk out your forward fold. So all of these poses, uh, these standing poses, can be done with the feet apart or the feet together. When the feet are apart, I find it helpful to use the block just so that the knees don't buckle. Okay, walk out your forward fold, countering our back bending posture, creating space and release in the low back. Keep doing this, or if you'd like, lift up onto the toes, bend the knees forward, melt the hips to the heels. If that's okay for the knees, do it once, perhaps do it twice. If you really like it, do it a third time. Why the heck not? And then we're going to come all the way down onto all fours in tabletop position. Plant the wrists below the shoulders. Spread your fingers and palms. Knees are hip width distance. Inhale, belly and chest down. Tailbone and gaze lift into your cow pose. And exhale, round the spine. Chin to chest, tailbone towards the floor. Belly button towards the ceiling. Round the back body cat pose and continue to move between these two shapes with the pace of your own breath. So I like to mix it up when, um, when we encounter this sequence. I love this sequence. I put it in almost every class, but usually I put it towards the beginning of class. Notice the experience of this sequence at this point in the practice. What is calling for your attention as you move through these two shapes? And how might, what kind of decisions might you start to make as you move through these two shapes based on the data you're collecting in your body at this moment? So you might choose to take one pose and hold it for additional breath. You might choose to shift the hips side to side, forward, back, ellip make elliptical uh, movements with the hips, or create more focus in the shoulders by bending the elbows back, melting the heart downward. Be an explorer. Observe and be observed <laughs> all by you. Okay, back to a neutral spine, and we're going to uh, come into a plank position. So if you're not at the top of your mat, walk towards the top of the mat as you extend your legs. 
straight back. So I would like to emphasize the alignment between shoulders, hips, and knees here. If the hips are swayed way down, try to engage the legs, lift through the thighs, draw back through the sides of the waistline to lift the hips in line with the knees. If that isn't doing the trick, I encourage you to bring the knees down for this pose and for uh, the, the invitation of push-ups that will come later. Okay, into the plank. Walk your feet as wide as the mat or take the knees wider. Take your hands closer together. And then inhale, right, left hand to right shoulder. Exhale down. Inhale, right hand, left shoulder. Exhale down. Inhale, left, right. Down, right, left. Down, left, right. Down, right, left. Down, one more round. Left, right. Down, right, left. Down, widen the hands. Press the hips up and back and arrive in your downward facing dog, perhaps introducing yourself to this shape with a little dog walk. Bending one knee, reach the opposite hip, uh, rock, reaching the opposite heel, down the opposite hip, out and back, exploring the back of each leg, taking time to release through one leg if it feels tighter or shorter. Okay, bring your downward dog to stillness. Look forward. As you look to the room in front of you, press your hands even more strongly down and forward. Feel the engagement of the upper back muscles as the shoulders pull together. And then release the head down, wrap your tricep muscles towards your face, and then begin to lengthen through the legs. Lift into the kneecaps, reach down through the heels, open up, lengthen, expand the back body, and then inhale, take the left leg straight up and back, lift to the top of your mat, and exhale to lunge the left foot between the hands. Set up in a lunge with hands framing the front foot, either tented fingers or hands on blocks. Notice where you're at with your lunge. How does it feel? Arrive in this moment. If you practice with me, this is probably a pose you do quite often. I, lo I love a lunge. So notice what the lunge is for you today. Where is your body calling for your attention? Okay, if you have a blanket, you might move it underneath the right knee for some padding or you might double up your mat. Lower the right knee to the floor. Bring your hands to your front thigh. Interlace your fingers and press your elbows straight. Prop up your chest. Draw the sides of the waistline back to lengthen the tailbone down. And now you may either use a strap to grab the right foot, or if you can reach the right foot with the right hand, or left foot, yeah, right foot with the right hand, point the right toes, bend the right knee, reach for the inside of the foot, and pull the heel towards the outer hip. So this might be plenty. You might have uh, short quads, tight quads. You might be uh, very content <laughs> with the experience as it is. If you would like more sensation from this moment, you may begin to melt the hips down and forward. Wrap the right outer ribs, right shoulder towards the front of your mat, squaring the hips and chest forward. Kick the foot into the hand, pull the heel towards the out outer hip. Still feeling good, still wanting more. Left arm to the sky. Still feeling good, still wanting more. Look up, curl up, curl back. Notice the face. What's your face telling you about your decisions at this moment? <laughs> Where you've come to? Release the foot if you have it. Send the hips back, left toes towards the ceiling, round the spine over the left leg, coming into a runner's stretch. Reach through the left heel, pull back through the left toes, lift into the left kneecap, melt the forearms down towards the floor. Awaken, expand the back body once again. Come back to breath.
left foot grounds, plant the hands, send your left leg back, downward facing dog, and either stay in down dog, or if you'd like to follow with me through a set of five push-ups, please come along. Inhale forward to plank, exhale lower down with control. Inhale, press up, exhale, hip shift back one. Inhale forward, exhale lower, inhale press, exhale back two. Inhale forward, exhale lower, Inhale, press, exhale, back three. Inhale, forward, exhale, lower. Inhale, press, exhale, back four, right? Inhale, forward, <laughs> exhale, lower. Inhale, press, exhale, back five. Sometimes I can lose count in the course of five counts. Okay, right leg lifts. Look forward, lunge the right foot forward. Set up with a lunge, right hand, or hands frame the front foot on fingertips or blocks. Establish your lunge, back leg straight and strong, reaching through the heel, lengthening back through the tailbone, broadening the chest space, reaching heart and gaze forward. Left knee to some padding. Hands to the front thigh, interlace the fingers, press the arms straight, crop up the chest. Collarbones broad, lower ribs in and back, tailbone lengthens down. Choose to stay here or reach back with the left hand with a strap perhaps, point the left toes, bend the left knee, reach for the inside of the foot, pull the heel towards the outer hip. Choose to stay here or melt the hips down and forward. Wrap the left ribs towards the front of the room, squaring the chest forward. Choose to stay here or right arm reaches up. Perhaps look up, perhaps look up, curl back. Soften the face. down dog. Invitation to a second set of five push-ups. Inhale to plank, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back one. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back two. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back three. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale press, exhale back four. Last one. Inhale forward, exhale lower. Inhale, press, and exhale back. Downward facing dog. Look forward, hands push down and forward, bend the knees, hips reach back. And then as you release the head, wrap the tricep muscles towards the face. Draw the lower ribs in and back, lengthen the heels down, lift the kneecaps up. And then lower your knees to the floor. If you have a strap, locate it now and get a loop in your strap. So we're going to do Ekka Pada Raja Kapotasana, one-legged king pigeon pose. So you're likely familiar with pigeon pose. You might be familiar with this pose as well, but um, this is where you put your head back into your foot. <laughs> so uh, for those of us who uh, cannot put their head in their foot today, uh, we have this prop. So, um, if you know your head doesn't go into your foot easily, then make the loop big. Make it a big old loop. Um, so uh, <laughs> follow, follow along. I'm getting, I might be getting you uh, nervous about something that need not make you nervous. Okay, back to down dog. Left leg's gonna lift, pull the heel into the hip, as is our custom before coming into pigeon, let's stack the hips, push the hands down and forward, reach the hips up and back, then look to the top of the mat and lunge the left shin forward. So instead of the pigeon where we're trying to get the top shin parallel to the top of the mat, today I'm going to invite you to bend the left knee, pull the left heel in towards the left hip, and then make sure the left knee is wider than the left hip. Track the right leg back, tuck the back toes under, 
And then notice if you're sitting on your left hip. So if you're sitting over like this and this hip is uh, jacked up, <laughs> then I'm going to invite you to prop that left hip by placing a block or a blanket to support that hip so that it is off of the floor and the hips are more in equal height. Scissor the legs in, so right leg pulls forward, left leg pulls back to uh, square the hips, and then lift into your pelvic floor, Mula Banda, draw in and up. Take hold of your strap with your right hand, take hold of the loop, place the loop around your right foot, and then uh, take the thumb in the loop of the strap, draw the right elbow forward and then point it up. Okay, step one. Bust step one. Good place to be. Reach back with the left hand. Place all eight fingers in the strap with the thumbs out of the strap. Elbows towards the ceiling. Tilt the chin up. Engage your lotus heart. Unfurl, unfold the heart space. Skyward. Look up, look back. Curl back. Possibly walk, ah! <laughs> walk your feet closer to your hands. I'm going to make my loop a little smaller. Exploring that, I bet you can guess that there's a second side to this pose. So gingerly make your way out of that ridiculousness, <laughs> that wonderment, back into a down dog, and you might walk out said dog, evening out the sensations in the legs, moving in such a way that creates release through the outer hips and the low back before we get to that second side. Okay, what's next? Right leg is gonna lift this time into first three-legged dog, then heel to the hips, stack the hips, push the hands down and forward, reach back through the knee, look to the top of the mat, and then lunge the right shin forward. Right knee <laughs> bends wider than the right hip. Right uh, knee, is, knee joint is closed, so you're bending the knee. And then, uh, is the right, are you sitting down on the right hip? If so, bring some padding underneath the right hip. Tuck those back toes, scissor the legs in, right leg back, left leg, left knee pulls down and forward. Draw up Mula Banda as you come more upright. Grab the strap with the left hand. Loop the strap around the left foot. Hold the strap. First with the left thumb, and then turn the elbow skyward. This might be a good place to stop the bus. You might stop the bus, widen the loop, and then get back on the bus. Or you might make the loop smaller. Hand, right hand back to the loop. Look up, chin to the ceiling, gaze to the sky. Connect with your Blooming heart, unfolding, unfurling reality here. Head back, foot forward, Mula Banda, draw in and up on the pelvic floor. As you're ready, release. <laughs> to manually get my head back up there. Okay, finally, gingerly, make your way back once again to downward facing dog. Walk it out. Release sensation from the low back or through the low back. And then lower your knees down. Swing the legs forward. Come to lie on your back. This might be the one time I actually make the class approximately 60 minutes. <laughs> and 
Okay, so uh, draw your heels in towards your hips. We're going to begin our descent here. Uh, left knee in towards the chest. Interlace your fingers around the left shin. Draw the knee in and up towards the left armpit. And then take hold of the foot and extend uh, the, <laughs> and then move into half happy baby. So the knee is still bent. Shin perpendicular to the floor, sole of the foot open towards the ceiling, hands grasping the foot, maybe interlace the fingers around the sole of the foot if you have access to that. Kick your foot into your hand and draw the knee down towards the floor. So if this is interesting, you like where you are, uh, breathe through it. If you want more sensation from this pose, extend the right leg straight. The right heel can attempt to ground, the right calf might push downward, the right thigh might push down for deeper intensification. If it's already intense, you probably don't need to do all that stuff. You are the observer and the observed. Release the left foot back to the floor, right knee hugs into the chest, interlace the fingers, draw the knee in and up towards the right armpit, squeeze it in, take hold of the foot, and come into half happy baby on the right side. Kick the foot into the hands, pull the knee downward. Again, is this interesting, blunty intense, stay here, or choose extending the left leg straight. As you extend the left leg, consider grounding the heel, the calf, the left inner thigh. And then everyone consider, consider breathing. <laughs> the right foot, bring both knees into the chest and then widen them out towards the armpits. Take hold of the outer edges of both feet, rock side to side in full happy baby. Feet together, interlace the fingers around the outer edges of the feet as you widen your knees out to either side of the room, reclined bound angle pose or reclined butterfly. Extend through the inner thighs. Let the hands push, and let the feet push into the hands, pulling the arms long, lifting the arm bones away from the floor as the back of the head stays grounded. Lengthen the back body along the floor. Just for today, if you'd like, extend your legs out, holding the outer edges of the feet, taking them wide before wrapping the legs together and giving yourself a big hug. Great job. You did it. You observed. You were observed. Chin to chest, forehead towards your two to knees. Squeeze in. Squeeze in, squeeze in, squeeze in. And then release back. So choose your savasana today. Another option to choose. Uh, and take, I encourage you to take your time choosing because um, the more, um, what do you call it, intention you put into this practice of savasana, I think the more, <laughs> the more you get out of it. So whether you decide to take legs at the wall in lieu of an inversion today, or you choose to lie on your back, I'm going to do, um, I don't know what you would call this pose, but uh, it's a, it's, kind of another heart opening shape. Um, I'm going to fold up some blankets, 
if you don't have uh, if you have a bolster that that would be a good prop to use here I'm going to take my hips to the bottom of these folded blankets grab my eye pillow lie back onto these blanket folds create a little uh, cushion for the back of my neck So get your comfort items here. Take a shape that feels uh, safe and supportive. And once there, close your eyes. So again, use this analogy of um, the the body being like a large um, a large house or a large building. And it's uh, your job at this time to visit every room in the house, every space in the building, and make sure there's nothing else going on there, no more activity. And as you travel through all of the spaces of the physical body, you're going to turn off the light. Set up the body for rest, rest and reflection. You might visit first the toes, the balls of the feet, the sole of each foot, the bones, muscle, skin of each foot. Turning off the lights, moving up through each ankle, the corridor of each shin, each knee, each thigh, settling the legs. Moving awareness through the pelvis, the low back and abdomen. Forearms, the elbows, the upper arms, the upper back. Soften the corridor of the neck, the interior of the head. And then again, notice any expression on the face. Think about Turning off the outdoor lights, soften the face, and come to reside at the hearth of your own heart.
you might move movement back into the body. Perhaps arms and legs rock from side to side. Eventually bending the knees, placing the feet on the floor. Extend your left arm and roll up onto the left side of the body. And push back into a seated position with the eyes closed. You might bring the hands together in front of the heart, or you may choose to hold your own heart. Reconnect with breath. Might you even be able to sense the beat of your own heart? chant on three times to close this evening's practice. Exhale. And inhale for all. Thank you for your presence, either with the live stream or with the pre-recorded classes. Thank you for your devotion to yourself in your practice. The light in me recognizes and bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, what's uh, what else do I need to say? Not, nothing really. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, I will post my new schedule. Um, it's prob you know, it might just be a temporary schedule, but I'll let that I'll let it be known when I'm going to be teaching ne next week. I will surely keep this uh, 5:30 Wednesday uh, class going. Um, yeah, please get in touch with me. Um, you can. Email me at AthensPublic at gmail, or if you have my number, please um, you know text me. Let me know if you're taking the classes. Let me know if there's uh, something you'd like to do more of, or something you would like to see less of. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I will. Hope